Well, thank you so much, uh, Senator Langford, uh, Governor Fallon, Mr. Turpin, and all of those who've been involved with this astonishing memorial. Now, this is not just the Oklahoma Memorial, it's a national memorial. And the things that happened here 22 years ago affected us as a nation. I'm humbled to be here today with you, observing the anniversary and honoring the memory of 168 Americans who lost their lives 22 years ago today. This great crime, not only on Oklahoma City, but on America, is something that still echoes in the memories of my colleagues at the Department of Housing and Urban Development, where we lost 35 of our brothers and sisters who've dedicated their lives to helping other Americans. In remembrance and tribute at the national headquarters in Washington, D.C., there's a garden dedicated to those that perished here that day. And like in Oklahoma City, there's also a memorial to the children who were lost in the daycare center that day. But this observance is about more than our losses. It's also about the survivors and revisiting the cherished memories of those who work so hard every day to ensure a just and free society, a society that protects the most vulnerable people in our communities. I had the privilege of a meeting with several survivors yesterday and hearing their incredibly touching stories about that day. It's also about remembering the promise and the joy of the young and the innocent. And through our sorrow, building a nation that they would be proud to call home, where every little one is loved and is safe. No terrorist or weapon could ever take away that strength of purpose or innocence of character. None of those who died here, none of those who survived, not a, none of the fellow Americans will allow something like this to destroy who we are as a nation. You know, as a pediatric neurosurgeon, I so much enjoyed playing with those cute little innocent babies. It was fantastic. It was one of the best parts of the day to go to the clinic and see these little babies. But you know, we all started out as cute little babies. Even Timothy McVeigh started out as a cute little baby that brought smiles to the faces of all of those around them. And you have to ask yourself, what happened? What went wrong? You know, every one of us has an opportunity to be an influence on all the babies that are born today. The babies that were born last year, that were born 10 years ago, and are little children today. Because it is the experiences in life that will form who they become, what their personalities are. Will they embrace the American spirit? Or will they succumb to the forces of division and hatred, as Timothy McVeigh did. You know, my wife today is in Chicago, opening up a couple of reading rooms, which are places where a lot of the children, particularly, come from Title I schools. They come from homes with no books. They go to a school with no library. They don't become readers. They don't grasp the significance of the world beyond the place where they live. So we put these reading rooms in, and it changes their lives. But also tonight, there'll be a banquet celebrating the children who achieved Carson Scholar's status. They achieved at the highest academic levels. 
<clears throat> but that's only half of the award. The other award is for humanitarian service to their fellow man. They have to demonstrate that they care about other people. Because think about the heritage of our country. Think about your predecessors right here in Oklahoma who lived in communities in many cases that were hundreds of miles away from any other community. What was the spirit that allowed them to thrive? It was the willingness to work together, to share their skills, to be compassionate. If somebody got mauled by a bear or even killed, everybody else pitched in and took care of their family. That is the spirit that characterized America in the past. And the question that we should ask ourselves on this day, when we memorialize those who dedicated their lives to helping their fellow man, is which message will we take? Which America will we become? That America that is inspired by love and compassion and a willingness to put out a helping hand to those in need, or the America that listens to the purveyors of hatred, the my way or the highway group, who have caused such division. Senator Lankford was talking about the students who are graduating from college today, 22 years old the same time that this tragedy occurred. What are they being taught on the university campuses? Are they being taught to love everyone, including those with whom they disagree with? Or are they being taught that it's OK to shut those people down and to hate them? Two different Americas. And the question is, which is the one that we want? And at HUD now, we are looking to be a place that is about more than just putting a roof over people's head. It's about developing communities with education, with health care, with all the things that are needed to nurture and develop not only communities, but to develop individuals. Because our people are our most precious resource. And do we just house them, or do we develop them? Because if we use our intellect and we use our resources to develop our people, they become part of the engine. And if we don't, they become part of the load. If we extend a helping hand and we are truly fair and just and we use the values and principles that made America great, we can get them moving in the correct direction, which is up. We must stop the hatred and strife and recognize that the strength of America is our unity. It always has been our unity. People who came here from every part of this planet, our ancestors. But we have come to recognize that we're all in the same boat. And if part of the boat sinks, eventually the rest of it goes down too. And that's why we must be concerned about every individual. And what an opportunity we have to take away from that tragedy 22 years ago and think about our fellow Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice. Will we allow it to be a sacrifice in vain and listen to the purveyors of hatred and division? Will we, we allow it to be a seed that will nourish the strength and the unity of America, that will allow us to grasp the godly principles 
of loving your fellow man, of caring about your neighbor, of developing your God-given talents so that you become useful to the people around you, of having values and principles that govern our lives. If we do that, we will truly have one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for letting me remember with you, and God bless America.